In this session, we will cover the general features and functions of Sprinter. Sprinter is a manual testing tool, much like Manual Runner within ALM or Quality Center, except for it runs outside of Quality Center as a separate utility that then can connect into Quality Center, execute the tests, and store the results back into ALM. The unique feature or capability of Sprinter is that it has the ability to capture all of the screens while you're executing as well as capturing all of the steps that you are executing while you're running the test. Right now you'll see on the screen I have a Sprinter window open and you will see that there is a test called IE that is ready to run and how you would select a test you would open Sprinter, go to open, you would be logged into a project and in this case you can see I'm in the test lab. There's an instructor folder here, a test set called test and you can see that one of the runs here is called IE and that's the one that I'm pulled in. So I've got that test pulled in and there's some important things to note while you're looking at this. On the right hand side here you can see the general information about this test case. Its name, what test set it's a part of, who owns it or who's the person who created it, the name of this run and that's a unique date and timestamp, and then you can call this a draft run or not. You can say hey I want to run this as a draft run not a real run. Uh, you have that choice. But then if I look here and click on steps you can see all of the steps in this test case. If I click on parameters, you can see all of the parameters and you can change the actual values right here that you're going to use in this run of the test. In the bottom you'll see the results section which is grayed out because we haven't executed the test. So on the left hand side you'll see the run button here, it's this green button and you can see it has a P in the middle of that green button. That means that power mode is on and as you can see down at the bottom it says on. When you run with power mode on you have the ability to capture those screenshots to capture all the steps. You do not have to have power mode on. But there's some great features within power mode that uh, you'll want to leverage as you use the tool. So if I click on the application you'll see notice here it has the application. It's a web app it has a URL, it's using an IE browser and it's web. Okay, So I can go in and edit this application I've called Northway Solutions Search. It could be a web app, a desktop app, or a mobile app. I've given it a URL, I've said I want to do this with the IE browser and then you can check any technologies you know that the system has. You can also decide whether or not you want to start this browser as soon as the run starts or if you don't want to and you can decide whether or not you want to record on any open application. So I'm going to select start when the run begins and I'm going to click OK. And what that will do then is bring up that browser and start it for me as soon as the run starts. There's some other options with under here called data injection. So if you had a spreadsheet of values you wanted to inject into a form, a web form, uh, maybe it was last name, first name, home address. You could have a table of those values and then just click a button and inject that row of data into that form on the web page. It's not automation but it allows you to do it more quickly because you're pulling data from a spreadsheet. You also have the ability to, to record a macro and then play that macro back. So maybe you have a, a login screen and you want to log in with the same user ID and password every time. You could record that login session as you log into it and then the next time you come in just play that macro and it will play that macro and log in for you. There's another one called mirroring rules. And the mirroring rules is really interesting because with mirroring rules what you can do is set up where you run on multiple machines at one time. So if I go down here to mirroring I can add another machine. So I could remote desktop into a separate machine, have one machine running IE, the second machine running Firefox 
and now I can run the same test on both machines at the same time. So it allows you to mirror the test you're running on multiple machines. So great feature to have as you're running uh, Sprinter. And then you have this thing called scanners. And what scanners allows you to do is it allows you to turn on things like spell check, localization, which means uh, I could have a European uh, operating system or I could be checking for localization in, say, China. And it will check to ensure that the website is compliant with those localization rules. I can say check for web standards and look for broken links. And now as it's running, I have the ability to scan that site for those web standards and for those spell check and those issues. And it'll, it'll create a list of all of those issues that you have in your website. So a lot of power in there. So I'm going to now go to this test case and I'm going to click the run active test. And what you'll see is it'll start to initialize the run. It's starting to pull in all of those test steps. It's then going to set up the environment. And what you'll see is that Sprinter will go around the margins of the screen and you'll see it come up where it will show along the top and the bottom of the screen so it's not taking up all of the real estate and enable you to execute the test uh, in a very simple fashion and you can see it's now bringing it up and so now you can see that it opened this window and it actually went to a URL called Google you can see along the top you can see there's a tools toolbar so if I click on that you can see I can do a screenshot I can annotate a screenshot okay I have my run control where I can end my run so this is just like manual runner where I can end the run it'll tell me how many steps I've completed here's where I would record macros okay so I can record my macro just hit the record button run it and then play it and then end that macro and I can play it back then I have scanners remember the spell check I can run those scanners and then along the bottom here I have my actual steps and you can see it says in the first step here's the step open an IE browser the expected result the browser window opens and I can just pass that step and it'll go on to the next step and you can see the next step came off well I may not want to run in this fashion I may want to run this in a minimized view and I can do that by just clicking on this show subtitles button which is like a little icon for the monitor when I click on that notice that it put along the bottom here this bar that says in the browser address bar enter the URL Bing click click uh, enter the Bing toolbar open so I'm going to actually go in here now and put in Bing and click my enter button and now Bing is there okay so I'm on the Bing site so I'm gonna pass that step notice I just click the pass okay now on the browser click the enter button the page should refresh and go to the search page which it did and I'm gonna pass that in the Bing search text box enter Microsoft so I'm gonna do that Microsoft and I'm gonna click enter or the search button and it's going to come up and it said the page should refresh and and it's hard to read there so I wanna see what that um, result supposed to be so I'm gonna actually go back from here so I can see the whole result and it says the page should refresh Microsoft should be in the top five results okay and it is it's number one so I'm gonna actually go put an actual result so I click on the actual result button and I'm gonna put Microsoft is the number one result and as you can see I can't spell there we go but I want an image so an image is worth a lot more so I'm gonna actually save the screen as the actual result okay and notice it captured that screen and then if I click on the annotate button what that's gonna do is there's that image I can now go in here and I can grab an ellipse 
and it's now going to be red and I can circle let me make that smaller I can circle that result so now I can circle that result and you can see that that result is the number one result okay so now I'm going to save this I'm going to save screen capture I'm going to oops cancel I don't want to save it to my folder I want to actually save the results okay save to the actual results okay which has been saved and now I'm going to close this window and you'll see that that annotation is showing up on that result okay so now I go back to my results actually let me go back to this minimize view I'm gonna pass that step it says click the uh, in the upper right hand corner click the X which I'm going to do that will close the window I now know I'm at my last step I'm going to end the run and it's now ending the run as you can see and the result comes back as passed and you can see here it's passed you can see that there were six actions there were no defects no defect reminders you have the ability in Sprinter to say you know what I'm not ready to log the defect but let me mark this so I'll remember it and you can come back to that exact step in that exact screen and log a defect just like you were doing it during execution now notice there are a couple of things here <clears throat> there's user actions here now and there is a storyboard if I click on user actions you'll see everything that I entered every step that I did within Sprinter and now if I wanted to I could generate a test and actually log it as a test case in ALM or I can export it to UFT as a script the great thing about this is I can now use you uh, Sprinter to go capture those legacy test cases where I'm not the expert and I need a uh, an end user somebody who's an expert in the system to go in and do all of the steps and I can turn on Sprinter it's capturing all of their clicks and then you can submit that as a test case and when I generate a test what that's going to do then is make it into steps and I can put expected results I can go in and modify it and then save that as a test right into Quality Center so it's a way that I can very quickly create test cases from Sprinter if I go to the storyboard notice it has all of the steps that I went through and what I entered here as a storyboard so now I can actually go in in this storyboard and use this to generate or create a user guide because I have every screenshot and the great thing is I can turn on Quality Center to save all of these images so that I have them or I can say you know what just save the image for the failed steps so you have a lot of ability within the tool then to create and use and export this to Word to use it later as a user guide as a training guide so very very smart in how it works and notice I can create a smart defect so I'm in step 5 if I create a click on smart defect I have the ability to save all of the last five user actions or all user actions right I can include all of the steps up to the current step so I can say all of the actions that we went through to get to where the failure was and save that as the defect and now the defect has all the steps to recreate it in the defect already in ALM so great power within Sprinter now to be able to create these more intelligent defect records within the tool okay so tons of power within Sprinter Sprinter using power mode is a very powerful tool uh, to leverage for your testing effort 
Again, it, it is not an automation tool. It is a manual testing tool, but it has some automated features within it where it's capturing your steps and enabling you to effectively manage your test effort. Mm -hmm.